Hello and welcome back to a new video about hydraulics. This time we are going to talk about flow valves. In hydraulics we have two types of flow valves. Uh, two types. And you maybe think there are only two valves. There are a lot of valves. Uh, but there are two basic types. I show both of them. One is the flow control valve uh, and one is a flow regulating valve. Okay? When you need what and what the difference is we will explore in this video. Okay. Let's first check our problem we have, why we need flow valves. Huh? So I've made here a little drawing, huh? a little drawing of a typical hydraulic system, small hydraulic system, doesn't really matter. Yeah? So there's a pump that's producing pressure, the pressure line is going up here to a double acting cylinder. So in this position, the double acting cylinder will be filled here with pressure, this side, and this side is relieved against the tank, yeah? so the cylinder will go in, that's the standard. Yeah? Once the cylinder is in, yeah, here is the, the pump is not turning off, so we have a pressure release valve here, and we have here a certain pressure. Yeah? So here, let's say 120 bars. 120 bar, that's the pressure here because this is where this is cutting off. Okay? Pressure limiting valve. So that the flow is now going this direction. Uh, then we switch, then the pressure is switched to B and A is relieved. So the cylinder will travel now. Okay. And once it's drilled back, we are again at the position where only the flow is running this way. Huh? Now, how fast is the cylinder traveling? The cylinder is traveling as fast as the pump pumps. Okay? Usually, the pumps do, usually, we want to have a certain speed of a cylinder. We just do not want to go it. Huh? We want to do it. We want to have a little time. Okay? We want to give the cylinder time and therefore we have to slow down, we have simply to slow down the oil which is going inside. How do we do this? We do it by not increasing simply the, the, the resistance, stream resistance of the, of the line. Okay? So I reduce the size but not on the whole line, yeah, because then I would simply always waste energy somewhere. Yeah? I will do it locally. Yeah? So I will put in some sort of orifice. Okay? The, simplest, the simplest flow control valve is a disc you put in somewhere, make a little tiny hole, then the oil can only rush through this little tiny hole. Okay, so this such a thing, huh? little tiny hole, and if you put this somewhere in your tube, yeah, fix it somehow, doesn't really matter how, yeah, then we the oil has to go through this little tiny hole, and of course, this is not filling that fast, and if I want to make it faster, I, make, I would have to make a bigger hole. Yeah? So with the size of the hole, I can select how fast this is going. So I am, I am throttling. Yeah? However, there's a difference between, there are two types of, of these flow valves, flow uh, control valves. There is the orifice type. Yeah? This is looking like this, yeah, and there's the throttle, throttle valve, this looks like this. And how those symbols already show, it mainly depends on how, I mean, this is the hole, right, and if this here the length of the hole is relatively long compared to the diameter. Yeah? 
then it's a throttle. If the length of the hole is rather short compared to the tire meter, then it's an orifice type. Yeah? Orifices are not, uh, are not really, depending on viscosity, throttles are depending on viscosity, that's the main difference. But the, the main task for both is the same, just narrow down the pressure, yeah? narrow down the, the line, yeah? do Add, assist, add additional resistance, flow resistance, so that the oil is not running too fast into the cylinder, that the cylinder can only have a certain speed. Yeah? So, if we are now putting them here, yeah? so here, yeah? there is also the type which is, if I make it like this, yeah? then it's adjustable. This. Adjustable. Yeah? Always, if we are somewhere, somewhere, also here, I can do this. Huh? Make an error through, and now it's adjustable. I can adjust the pressure. Huh? Usually those things are adjustable. Okay, so now here's the orifice. Yeah? Here's the orifice, or in this, I've now drawn a throttle type. Yeah? Like I said, the function is the same, does not really matter, and also there is not sharp edge, now it's a orifice, now it's a throttle, now it's uh, viscosity bended and now not. So it's, in my opinion, it's not that important okay? to, to, to make this separation, categorization. Or, you know, if you go into details, everything gets important. Yeah? For our more like overview here, you should know there are two types. This is not depending on viscosity, this is depending on viscosity and what is behind. But, you know, the, the, the very much the details, okay, yeah. So, here is now the throttle. Yeah. What does it mean? I also have here 120 bars, yeah. or maybe a little bit less, yeah. a little bit less, because I have friction here also, yeah. maybe I have, or let's say we have 118, yeah. because the oil is running over here, and here it's al already some, some pressure lost. Yeah? And here, let's say, here is a certain force. Yeah? And this I want to overcome. Yeah? This is the task, because I want to move. Yeah? So let's say the force is a certain value, so here I need 40 bars. Yeah? 40 bars. to move this, yeah? because then the size and the pressure is high enough to move this. Yeah? Then I have reached exactly this F and I am going to start to move. So here we have a delta P of 180 to 40 is uh, 80, 80, 80, 78, 78 bar. Yeah? So this at the, at the flow rate, yeah, I need to reach a pressure difference of 78 bars at the orifice or at the throttle, yeah, then I will exactly reach this speed. Okay. Now, at the computer now, I show you how I try to draw something like this, an adjustable throttle type. Yeah. I will show you how this looks internally, those things. Yeah. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So what I tried to do is that I simply used almost the same block like last time yeah? and I tried if I could manage to build in there some construction that it is now a, a throttle valve, a adjustable throttle valve. I show now. Yeah? This is the block, yeah? I think you remember. And have a look at the bottom. This time the bottom only has two holes. Yeah? So there is already some difference, not a four anymore, but only two connections. Yeah? Because throttle valve has two connections, one input, one output, and between, in between, there is the throttle orifice or whatever. Yeah? Then the ends are also looking different, especially this one, so there seems to be a, th a thread and some things. So this is the thing where I can adjust how much throttling there is. So let's simply open, 
or look inside and here we see, aha, there are also only two chambers inside my hole. Uh, so pretty much it looks the same. So let's see again, use the cut version of this. Aha, so there is a little bit more now. Let's also cut this open. Good. So there is some sort of plug in here and there is some sort of needle and the needle can be adjusted with this thread yeah, uh, here or here. Yeah. And here we see already, aha, here this gap, if I move the needle in, yeah, this will get narrower. Yeah. So this is exactly the position where I break the oil. Yeah. So this is exactly the throttling position and I can adjust how big is the gap with the help of this needle. Eh? So if I screw this, screw this, this thread here eh? in or out, of course I have to, to, to move it eh? in, the, in the drawing, it's not that, then I can open and close this hole. But where is this hole leading to? Where is this leading to? So, so use this here and cut it open. Ah, so this is connected to this, to this one line here, we are passing the narrow passage and then we are exiting. So this is the input and this is the output. This is how this looks like yeah? or this might look like or how this is functioning. This is just for you that you can imagine how this is functioning. Usually the things are much smaller, uh, much smaller. There are also this type of, of uh, screw here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if there's uh, such a constructions out there. I just wanted to make it look a little bit fancy. Yeah? And uh, I tried. Yeah? So, but the function should be clear, I hope. I hope you can imagine now what the function is and how to adjust this. Yeah. yeah. So, let's have a short look again at our drawing yeah? and then we will see if this maybe has an issue. Yeah? This is a, a flow control valve. Yeah? So let's have a look there again. So you see, uh, now you know how this is, looks like, yeah? how this might look like or it's close approximation, let's say, it, yeah? to read to the real constructions. They are more fancy of course. And have it again a look at our drawing. Yeah? We said we have a certain va uh, value of force here. I have to overcome this value, so I need a certain pressure here. Yeah? If I have this pressure here, yeah? I said 40 bars, just because I say it's a number, that I say a number. So, and here we estimate we have 118 bars at before the throttle and after the throttle we have 40 bars. So at a certain flow rate, I want to have at the desired flow rate that the, that the cylinder is moving and desired speed. Yeah? I have to pour in or put in that many liters per second. Yeah? And exactly that liters per second, I have to reach a pressure loss of 78 bars. Yeah? Then it's traveling exactly with that speed. And this is working. This is really working. Now let's imagine what happens if here I have less force. Let's say second, second thing, I only need 20 bars. Because now it's unloaded. It's not that loaded anymore. Now it's unloaded. I only need 20 bars to move this cylinder. I still have this 118 here. This is not changing, right? So this is not changing because this is still 120 bars, so I have still this 118 here. Now I would need a pressure loss of 98 bars. Yeah? Delta P should now be 98 bar. Yeah? What is the logical consequence of this? Yeah? The logical consequence of this is that what what is the influencing factor at an orifice or at the throttle to, to produce a pressure loss, a pressure drop? The geometry, D 
this is not changing yeah? because it's adjusted like it is. Yeah? It's adjusted. So the geometry is not the, what can change is the flow rate. Yeah? So here we need a higher flow rate. But if we have a higher flow rate, yeah, then this is moving faster. So this means if I have high forces, this is moving slow. If I have low forces, this is moving fast. Yeah? And I once told you movement in hydraulic systems is not depending on load. And now we see it must be. Right. I mean, this thing here with the flow control valve, uh, this is a perfect solution for things where we usually have the same load. Uh, if there is always the same load case and the same, the same forces, we can adjust this with this. However, if you have an application where the forces are changing, yeah, where you have sometimes big forces, sometimes small forces, and you really need to, 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 to maintain the speed, yeah, then this is no solution. This is no solution. Because, you know, if you're digging in the dirt with your excavator and then dig in and it looks really slow and then you take and then you pour out whatever you digged out yeah somewhere else and suddenly everything is moving fast this is not you cannot control this right so the driver needs yeah, this is simply not applicable huh? however huh? engineers took care about this yeah? now I show you something yeah? also on the computer uh, how we might manage this. Yeah. Take a good look. Yeah, so this is a problem. Yeah, so with this construction, yeah, shown here, we will fall into this problem. Yeah. However, I tried now to extend this block a little bit. Yeah, yeah. let's see this version. Yeah. Here you see down here it's looking exactly the same. We still have this needle which can be moved yeah we still have then this adjusted hole and so on yeah that's exactly the same and now let's assume we've adjusted this to a certain value so the geometry is now fixed this is our throttle yeah good yeah. now if the pressure which is running through yeah is or that the oil which is running through the flow yeah, is have a certain level, there's a pressure difference between here and here. Okay? If there is no oil running through, there's no pressure difference between here and here. Yeah? And the more oil is running through, the more pressure difference between here and here will apply. So if I want to have a certain value of flow, yeah, the pressure difference between here and here must remain constant. Yeah. If the pressure difference is constant, then also the flow is constant. And this is our goal, right? Because if, you want the, if the flow is constant, then also the moving rate of the, of the cylinder, of the piston of the cylinder is constant. So, how to apply or how to achieve this? You see, there is a second stage above here. And there are holes which are connecting here on this side. It's connected before the throttle. This side here is connected to after the throttle. And there's a little springy spring inside. There's a little piston inside. Now let's think about if there is no pressure difference. It's here. So here and here is the same pressure because, because no oil is rushing through. Yeah? Then the spring, the sizes are the same so in the spring will help this side here yeah, the left side and the piston will go to its maximum extent so it will simply go to its limit here yeah. it will look like this yeah. so this is maximum open here this hole yeah. once oil is running through here we have a pressure difference between here and here right so here is now a higher pressure than here because this is before the throttle and this is after the throttle. If here is higher pressure than here, 
here on this side will be higher forces than here yeah? and if the force difference is big enough that the so if there is quite some oil running through already that we can overcome the force of the spring then this will move a little bit yeah? adjust the spring the spring will get additional tension and the force of the spring is now increased so at some point in time the forces are equal again however this one piston now shifted a little bit in the path of the oil and added additional additional uh, resistance streaming resistance so this means if there is oil running through then the force difference is is higher and we move into the left yeah? and since this is now an additional resistance I will have a pressure drop between here and here and I have an additional pressure drop between here and here okay so this is adding a second stage of pressure drop and this second stage of pressure drop is exactly applied so that the pressure difference between here and here is exactly the same. So if there is still more oil running through, then this will go further in this direction simply. And now you see it's really blocking a huge part of the hole already. So this is this is somehow balancing uh, the pressure the pressure at the throttle uh, by adding additional resistance okay this is simply balancing this is a pressure balancer uh, this small little tiny part here uh, this is engineering okay this is mechanical engineering at the simple part, simple solution, working, okay? With this two-stage approach, I can achieve that we have load independent flow rates. Yeah? Let's, I will show it once again at the, at the sheet also, yeah, that you better understand. This is how this looks like inside. Okay? Now, let's have a few a look on the on the sheet again. Okay, so let's switch to the to the sheet or draw now this two stage approach. Yeah? So there is balancer, pressure balancer. Yeah? Then there is the orifice, yeah? or on one side of the balancer we do have the pressure. Here, there's also the spring. Yeah. On the, the other side of the balancer, we have we get the pressure from before the orifice. This is how this looks like. Yeah. And afterwards, we go to wherever we go. Okay. And I said before, yeah, here we had 118 bars. This has not changed, right? And if we need here 40 bars. Yeah, first load case before from before here yeah. then maybe we have here a pressure drop uh, I need a total pressure drop of 78 bar so let's say here is a pressure drop of, of yeah, let's say 28 yeah. then it's easier to calculate <laughs> then here we have a pressure drop of 50 yeah. so this pressure balancer, this throttle, this additional throttle is now just getting rid of 50 bars so that I can get from 100, uh, 118 yeah, between minus 28 here we would have the 90 bars yeah, delta, this is always delta here yeah. here we have 90 bars then I have a delta of 50 bars and I only have 40 bars Okay. Now, second load case, we said 20 bars, we only need 20 bar here. Yeah. Here, 
it's still the same. We have 118 bar. Huh? And of course the delta here is also still the same, 28 bar, because this is what our load balancer is doing, right? To keep this constant. So here we have again 90 bars. So this time this load balancer needs to close even more and get rid of more pressure. Yeah? So here now 90 to 20 yeah, for 70 bars. Are wasted now, gone away. Yeah? This is how this is working. So in our case here, this was even adjustable here. <laughs> cool, right? Now it's load independent working. Yeah? It's working load independent. Uh, so you can use this in in if you want to lift something or, or lower something at a certain speed. If you want to drive some some tool, yeah, a machinery that you need, really need to have the same speed, yeah? you can use those things. There's only one thing which is not working perfect it's the beginning yeah because in the beginning there needs them to be there's a rush yeah and this thing here this balancer this needs a little time to reach its position to get rid of this yeah so the dynamic behavior has changed a little bit at the beginning it will and then slow down okay so to overcome this yeah you can there are solutions constructive solutions here yeah so that there are additional springs inside and so on. Yeah. Uh, and you could also do a bypass valve over here, yeah, so that you're not going directly to your drive, to your servo motor, to your application. You open the bypass valve, let the load balancer reach its position, that there is a the certain flow. It takes, I don't know, should it take a min as a second? Yeah? And then you switch the bypass valve to the, to the load and then it's already working, everything is in place. Yeah? This is also one possibility. Yeah, and this, this here was load uh, flow control valves and this here flow regulating valve. Yeah? This is how this is working. Yeah? That's hydraulics. Yeah? That's what you hear. We are not going to talk about cylinders again. We're not going to talk about hydro motors and so on. Yeah? Because it's simply obvious how they function. Because they function in principle the same way like we talked about in pneumatics. Yeah? There is a double acting cylinder. There are single acting cylinders. There are, there are, there are hydro uh, motors and so on. Yeah, it, they're working principle the same way. The construction is a little bit different yeah, because it's simply more massive. There is other ceilings inside and so on. Yeah. However, uh, you know, it's 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 working the same way. Yeah. I think you can imagine. Look the videos of Promatic about this this uh, working elements. The principle is the same. Construction is a little bit different. So, and this is why this is the last video uh, about these basics of hydraulics. Yeah? There will be more about hydraulics, yeah? because we never talked about how we have to calculate, how we have to somehow choose the things. Yeah? How do we do this? Yeah? We only touch briefly. So, there is this, another video series about this, simply called hydraulics. Yeah? And this is the follow-up of this one. Yeah? Then it's the application. And we're going to talk about what is, how to select the cylinder, how to select a certain valve, how to select the pump, how to... Yeah? And then we're also talking about proportional valves. Yeah? Right now we only switched. We switched from this position to this position. Then we're going to talk about proportional, proportional valve. Yeah? Regulating valve, proportional valves. Also an interesting topic. But next upcoming videos okay in this new or other series of hydraulics no longer basics okay for this time 
Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.